What lies beneath the surface when music takes a dark turn? It's no surprise that music has always opened the door to artistic expression, from the shrill screams of acid bath, all the way to the contralto voice of Amy Winehouse, there will forever be a message that lies behind the music that is created, intentional or not. Today, we're gonna dive into what happens when music takes a dark turn and has some very concerning backstories. If you're interested in interacting with the Knight community, I highly encourage you to join the Discord in the description. If social media is more your speed, I also have Twitter and Instagram linked below. Check it out. This video is sponsored by MyHeritage. There's something truly captivating about uncovering the stories of our ancestors and understanding where we come from. I partnered with MyHeritage because they provide an exceptional range of tools and resources that make building and exploring your family tree an easy and enjoyable adventure. I simply created a profile and added myself manually to build my family tree. I even had the option to add a photo, so I chose one that looked pretty neat. Let's zoom out and look at my entire family tree. It's pretty wild looking at all the history that comes from just a few people. But the real magic begins when we start delving into the extensive historical document collection on my heritage. With over 19 billion historical documents available, I could explore the lives of my ancestors in remarkable detail. Birth records, marriage certificates, census data, everything is at my fingertips. But here's where it gets truly exciting instant discoveries. With just a click of a button, I can add an entire branch to my family tree based on the records that were found. All of this previously unknown knowledge is now just ready to be looked at and shared with my loved ones. Take a look at this. We found an old photo of my grandmother in high school, and thanks to my heritage's incredible features, we can now repair, colorize, enhance, and even animate it. It's like stepping back in time and experiencing these moments firsthand. Start building your own family tree. Uncover the secrets of your heritage and connect with relatives you never knew existed. Sign up for a 14-day free trial and enjoy all of the amazing features MyHeritage has to offer. If you decide to continue your subscription, you'll get a 50% discount. Click the link at the top of the description box or the pinned comment to begin your adventure today. Mr. Kitty, 44 Days Within the genre of electronic music, a very prominent figure has emerged, Mr. Kitty. Mr. Kitty, or Forrest Avery Carney, is an American singer, songwriter, record producer, and DJ who has carved a unique path in the music industry. He's known for blending various genres, such as synthwave, synthpop, new wave, and dark wave. His breakthrough came in 2014, when his song After Dark took the world by storm. It gained viral popularity after videos were uploaded in YouTube in 2019 featuring the song. This catapulted Mr. Kitty into the spotlight. The song has cemented itself further into online culture after having a huge presence on TikTok. Beyond his solo endeavors, he has also co-produced songs with the likes of Pastel Ghost and Crystal Castles, showcasing his versatility as a musician. Funnily enough, those musicians have also earned themselves a seat in online culture too. TikTok and other social media sites frequently use their songs. You probably just don't realize it. Have a listen. Delving into Mr. Kitty's lyrical content, you'll discover many dark themes such as loss, depression, and death. An example of this are lines like, As my body leaves a void, fill it up with memories that I've destroyed, from the song From Liquid, and as the hours pass, I will let you know that I need to ask before I'm alone, from After Dark. On the topic of these depressing lyrics, Mr. Kitty's darkness really shows on a song by the name of 44 Days. 44 Days is the first track off of Mr. Kitty's 2012 album, Eternity. This song details the real-life story of Japanese student Junko Furuta. In November of 1988, Junko Furuta, a 16-year-old high school student, was abducted by four individuals, Hiroshi Miyano, Joe Agura, Shinji Minato, and Yasushi Wantabe. She would be held captive in a Tokyo home for 44 days, where the most abhorrent things that could be done to a human being would happen to her. During her period of confinement, Junko experienced unspeakable acts of torment, mistreatment, and sexual aggression. Her captors subjected her to immense amounts of physical harm, inflicted burns using cigarettes, and caused severe injury to this innocent woman. Additionally, she endured various forms of humiliation and degradation. 
Her captors would never release her and she would succumb to her injuries on January 4th of 1989. Once she had passed away, her captors put her body in a 55-gallon drum and filled it with concrete. The details of Junko Furuta's case stunned and traumatized many when details came to light. The perpetrators were arrested and convicted of their crimes. However, justice wouldn't be served as many would have liked to see it. Due to the juvenile justice system in Japan at the time, these disgusting criminals faced relatively lenient sentences. The highest sentence was 20 years in prison, and the lowest was only 5 to 7 years. While I won't spend too much time going into every little detail about this case, a good friend of mine named Dire Trip does. His video is truly the best source when it comes to all the nitty gritty, and he is exceptionally respectful to Junko Furuta's memory when discussing it. I highly recommend watching it to get further insight. With that being said, Let's look into the lyrics of this song. Yeah, someone made a song about the case. I I couldn't imagine touching this with a 10-foot pole, but I guess Mr. Kitty wanted to do that. 44 days I've been held here. I will never see the light of day. Please save me from reckless, violent hearts. Bodies rest in graves of cold concrete. They woke me up, pain in my gut, with several cuts. These boys are mindless demons. I'm losing blood. The fear they lust. Memories are dust. No one can hear me crying. This lonely room, I call my tomb, a falling moon. How will they choose to end me? Before my eyes, a fire lights. My body dies. Hell will engulf me slowly. Usually, I am very okay with the idea of artistic expression. Like, Jane's Addiction has a song called Ted Just Admit It. The whole song is essentially about Ted Bundy being unable to admit to the murders that he has done and how he touches on the idea that violent, explicit media is what led him to commit these murders. Hell, there's even a sample from one of Ted's interrogation tapes in the song. There's going to be people turning up in canyons and there's going to be people being shot in Salt Lake City because the police there aren't willing to accept what I think they know and they know that I didn't do these things. But even with that, it doesn't feel remotely close to the disgust that comes from 44 Days. I'm not trying to be the moral police over here, but it just feels off to me. I'd be interested in having an open dialogue about this, though. If you feel like I'm being overly sensitive, or maybe my feelings make sense, drop a comment below. I imagine there's some interesting discussion that can come from this. Before we go any further, I wanted to remind you of something. You are stronger than you think, and you have resilience to face any challenge that comes your way. Life can be tough, but remember that you have the power to overcome obstacles and emerge even stronger. Take a moment to acknowledge your worth and the incredible progress that you've made. Take care of yourself. Mount Erie, Real Death. The band Mount Erie stands out as a beautiful and introspective project led by Phil Elverum. The song, Real Death, holds significant emotional weight as it delves into Elverum's personal experience of losing his wife. Recorded after her passing, the song captures raw emotions and serves as a central theme for the entire album. Mount Erie was created after the final release of The Microphones, another musical project by Phil Elverum. With Mount Erie, Elverum aimed to explore newer artistic directions and leave behind the previous project. The band's sound can be categorized as indie folk and indie rock with lo-fi elements, adding a raw and intimate quality to their music. Real Death and the album reflects the deeply personal journey of Phil Elverum after the death of his wife. The lyrics are drawn from his own experiences and notes written during his wife's illness, allowing listeners a glimpse into his profound grief and the process of coping with the loss. The album as a whole maintains an intimate and introspective atmosphere, inviting the audience to share in Elverum's emotional journey. In an interview, Elverum expresses a desire to leave Washington, the place where he shared his life with his deceased wife. He expresses a longing to escape the memories that haunt him, suggesting a need for a fresh start and the search for solace outside the familiar environment that holds a lot of painful reminders. The album and song don't pull any punches in terms of the vulnerability that's shared, mainly drawing from Elverum's personal experiences and reflecting on his journey through grief and healing. Crusted with tears, catatonic and raw, I go downstairs and outside you still get mail. A week after you died, a package with your name on it came, 
and inside was a gift for our daughter you had ordered in secret. And collapsed there on the front steps, I wailed. A backpack for when she goes to school a couple years from now. You were thinking ahead to a future you must have known deep down would not include you. Though you clawed at the cliff you were sliding down, being swallowed into a silence that's bottomless and real. Roar, Christmas Kids. Roar is an American solo musical project led by Owen Evans. The project was started in 2010, and Evans has since released a series of EPs and three studio albums under the moniker. Evans' musical journey with Roar began after his previous band, Asleep in the Sea, disbanded in 2007. In response to this, he created Roar and released the project's debut EP, I Can't Handle Change, in 2010. This EP served as a personal response to the disbandment of Asleep in the Sea. Shortly after, Roar released the Day Trotter Session EP in 2011. The project's third EP, I'm Not Here to Make Friends, was released in 2012, and it marked Roar's only release under Really Records. Following this, Roar independently released its debut studio album, Impossible Animals, in 2016. In 2019, the song I Can't Handle Change gained significant popularity on the internet, particularly on TikTok. This exposure brought attention to Roar's music and expanded its fan base. And then in 2023, another song from the I Can't Handle Change EP titled Christmas Kids went viral on TikTok as well. The song's popularity led to its charting on the Irish Singles Chart and the UK Singles Chart, making Roar's first appearance on international music charts. In the song Christmas Kids, Roar sheds light on Phil Spector's manipulative tactics, symbolized by the Christmas twins that he gifted Ronnie Spector, one of the famous musicians from the Ronettes. These twins, or gifts, were intended to keep her dependent on him, creating a sense of obligation and control within the relationship. They served as a stark reminder of her entrapment and limited freedoms. Phil Spector subjected Ronnie to various forms of abuse, both physical and psychological. He isolated her by creating a prison-like environment, complete with barbed wire gates and restrictions on reading materials. Ronnie's freedom was severely limited as she could only leave to purchase feminine products, and guards were sent after her if she exceeded the allocated time. The threat of violence loomed over her, with Phil even threatening her with a glass coffin and keeping her shoes as a means of control. In response to the oppressive circumstances, Ronnie turned to alcohol as a coping mechanism leading her to hospitalization in an attempt to escape from Phil. One of the avenues for her temporary peace was attending Alcoholics Anonymous meetings, which provided her with a means to temporarily escape from this terrible reality. These meetings became a lifeline for her, offering a brief reprieve from the clutches of her abusive relationship. It's also worth noting how the seemingly innocent songs of the 60s, including those performed by the Ronettes, can take on a sinister meaning when examined through the lens of men having control over women. These songs, which were once celebrated by romance and love, now bear the weight of this hidden oppression and control. Roar's exploration into this toxic relationship with Phil Spector brings to light the brutal reality that she had endured. Their lyrics paint a vivid picture of manipulation, abuse, and isolation. I'm leaving, Phil. I'm leaving now. I'm going to escape, but you won't know how. Or where to find me when I'm gone. I'll drink myself to death inside this prison cell. So get me out of here. Get me out of here. You'll change your name or change your mind and leave this fucked up place behind. But I'll know. I'll know. Lost Prophets, Town Called Hypocrisy. Let's explore the disturbing history surrounding Lost Prophets, a band formed in 1997 and the actions of Ian Watkins, one of its members. Despite their initial success, the band's legacy is forever tainted by Watkins' criminal activities, which will absolutely leave you repulsed. Lost Prophets was a Welsh rock band formed in 1997. They attained commercial success and gained a dedicated fan base with their blend of alternative rock, new metal, and emo sound. Lost Prophets released several successful albums, including The Fake Sound of Progress, Start Something, and Liberation Transmission. 
which featured hit singles like Last Train Home and Rooftops, a liberation broadcast. If it wasn't for Ian's horrific crimes, songs like Rooftops and 4AM Forever would still have been one of the most recognized and even classic tracks within the 2000s emo genre. The band enjoyed a successful career throughout its existence, However, beneath the surface, Ian Watkins had a history of child cruelty, even before his eventual arrest. This history foreshadowed the disturbing events that would later come to light. Even with all of this stuff going on behind the scenes, it's been reported that the entire band was unaware of his actions. I imagine the group would have spoken out about everything sooner had they known. Reports emerged that Watkins was seen backstage with multiple underage fans during a tour in 2006, raising suspicions about his intentions. An ex-girlfriend of his also witnessed disturbing images involving minors and drug paraphernalia as early as 2010, providing further evidence of his troubling activities. Additionally, an Australian woman accused Watkins of assaulting her child in 2010, but Unfortunately, no further investigation took place. However, during the recording of the band's fourth album in 2009, Watkins admitted to abusing a two-year-old child in California. These shocking revelations led to his eventual arrest and subsequent sentencing. Adding to the chilling nature of the story, Watkins infamously claimed that his actions were mega lols. While this might just sound like him being dismissive of the entire situation, this is actually much more disturbing. Fans that adored the band had merch that was labeled Megalols. Imagine all of the fans that adored this group now having a shirt with Megalols on it, which was said by this sick and twisted individual. To make matters worse, Watkins literally had his computer password be I F U K kids. In the song Town Called Hypocrisy, there are also many points of unsettling subtleties found within the song and its accompanying music video. I find this entire music video disturbing due to the fact that Ian is almost flaunting how much he's able to get away with. When you watch the video without the context, it seems innocent. With all the context added though, you can absolutely see how he's just showing off. It's literally someone hiding in plain sight. You see that a lot though with people that think they're above the law. It's only a matter of time until they're caught. The video adopts a style reminiscent of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, a children's show known for discussing themes of friendship, love, kindness, and acceptance. However, the presence of disturbing elements becomes evident, such as a slight pause on the phrase oral hygiene, saying please and oral hygiene, and Watkins being seen with two underage girls. Additionally, women dressed as animals may allude to Watkins' possession of explicit animal content, if you know what I mean. The monologue speaking directly to children at the end of the video further adds to the discomfort evoked by the song and video. Hi kids, welcome to town time. Can you take this broken boy and put the pieces back as one? Though he has all of his toys, he is never having fun. Can you take this lonely girl? I pick her up from the ground cause there's no pride to be found. When you follow sheep around and no future here, no future for us in this town. Save your sympathy. Who do you think you're fooling? Everything is dead. Now you welcome me to a town called hypocrisy. At the drive-in, Invalid Litter Department. Formed in 1994, At the Drive-In is a band known for their post-hardcore sound. However, one of their notable songs, Invalid Litter Department, serves as a disturbing reflection on a tragic, real-world issue. The song raises awareness about the alarming number of women who were killed in the Ciudad Juarez between 1993 and 2005, shedding light on government inaction, impunity, and the complex factors contributing to the ongoing crisis. Between 1993 and 2005, Ciudad Juarez, a city located on the US-Mexico border, experienced a devastating wave of violence that claimed the lives of approximately 370 women. The high number of femicides that occurred during this period garnered national and international attention, highlighting the urgent need to address the systematic issues 
fueling the crisis. One of the most distressing aspects of the Ciudad Juarez femicides is the perceived lack of effective preventative measures and the failure to bring the perpetrators to justice. Families of the victims, activists, and human rights organizations have criticized the government's response, citing inadequate investigations, corruption, and even prevailing culture of impunity surrounding these cases. While the exact motives behind the femicides in Ciudad Juarez remain complex and multifaceted, several potential factors have been identified. The city's proximity to the U.S.-Mexico border and its involvement in drug trafficking routes have contributed to a climate of violence and organized crime. The maquila industry, which employs thousands of women in factories manufacturing goods for export, has been involved in exploitative labor practices, gender inequality, and a lack of adequate protections for workers. At the Drive-In's Invalid Litter Department serves as a powerful platform to raise awareness about the tragic phenomenon of these femicides. The song sheds light on the government's inaction and the multitude of factors that contribute to the ongoing crisis. By using their platform to bring attention to the pressing issue, At The Drive-In emphasizes the importance of addressing systematic problems and pursuing justice for the victims. Intravenously polite, it was the walkie-talkies that had knocked the pins down as their shoes gripped the dirt floor in the silhouette of dying, dancing on the corpse's ashes. Yeah. They had plans for him. They have spun the last of the pimps, polyester, satin nail jewelry lips, while the guillotine just laughed again, dancing on the corpse's ashes, and the paramedics fell into the wound, like a rehired scab at the barehanded plant, an anesthetic penance beneath, the hail of contraband, dancing on the corpse's ashes. Shushu, I love the Valley O. Shushu is an American experimental rock band formed in 2002 by singer-songwriter Jamie Stewart in San Jose, California. The band's name was inspired by the film Shushu, The Sent Down Girl, which influenced their music. Led by Jamie Stewart as the constant member, Shushu has gone through various lineup changes over the years. They gained attention with their debut albums, Knife Play and A Promise, which received positive critical reception. Shushu's sound combines elements of indie rock, experimental music, and noise, incorporating instruments like harmoniums, brass bells, and keyboards. Throughout their career, Shushu has released a series of albums, EPs, and collaborations, often tackling personal and intense subject matter. Their releases include Fabulous Muscles, Women as Lovers, Dear God I Hate Myself, and Forget. They have also paid tribute to Nina Simone with the album Nina and explored the music of Twin Peaks on Plays the Music of Twin Peaks. It's safe to say that Shushu has a very extensive catalog of music for listeners. With that being said, that brings us to the song I Love the Valley O. Jamie Stewart's music often reflects on more intimate and depressing parts of their life. It examines the depths of human condition, exposing raw emotions and confronting the pain of personal tragedies. Jamie Stewart's haunting vocal performance captures the anguish of losing his parents and contemplates themes of taking one's life and despair. Musically, the track starts with a gorgeous arrangement before evolving into a chaotic soundscape that intensifies with the emotional turmoil. It gives listeners a glimpse into the depths of the human experience and the darkness that comes with it. It's a pill and you've got to take it. It's a pill that you've got to take. It's a pill and you've got to take it. I won't rest until you take it. That's a razor and you make a threat. That's a razor. Make a million billion threats. That's a razor and you make a threat. And I won't rest because I heard it all before. As we conclude this journey into the world of disturbing music, one thing becomes clear. Music will forever be something that intrigues and potentially unsettles us. It has the power to reach deep within our souls, stirring emotions we never knew existed. These songs with their chilling backstories remind us of the boundless possibilities of artistic expression. They push the boundaries, challenge our perceptions, and leave us with an unforgettable mark. So I say let it continue to intrigue, inspire, and 
yes, even unsettle us. Before we hop into the end segment, I would like to thank my patrons on the side. You obviously don't have to do it, but it means so much to me. Thank you all for supporting my weird little videos on the internet. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed the video, why not like and subscribe? It definitely helps me out. If you didn't though, why not dislike? And let me know what I can improve on for next time. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you on the next one.